Hello and welcome to lesson one in programming fundamentals and our introduction to C sharp. So basically programming it comes down to us entering some code, some instructions, an algorithm and then the computer can interpret it, compile it or assemble it into binary so it can run on the hardware. So why C sharp? Well there's lots of different programming languages from machine code, C++, Java, Python, Pascal, Lua, there is loads of programming languages out there. But it does, when it comes down to it, they're all the same core concepts, well, mostly, which is we have some way of inputting and outputting data. We have some way of assigning that data into the memory of the computer. Uh, we can then select, we can choose a path to go on. Uh, we can repeat those instructions, sometimes millions of times a second. And then comes down to the math stuff. So I addition, subtraction, multiply and divide, our greater than and less than signs, and a little bit of algebra. Um, so why C Sharp? Well, C Sharp is a nice learning language. It can then lead into C, C++, Java, JavaScript, PHP, because these all have an extremely similar syntax. So Unity uses C Sharp, which obviously a lot of my other tutorials are. Unreal uses C++, web development uses JavaScript and PHP, plus others. Embedded systems commonly use C and C++, and again, these are all very similar, so you could almost copy and paste some code between these languages. We can create applications in C++ and C Sharp. We can do Android development using Java, so again, the code is very, very similar. And when it comes down to it, our programming constructs, as I've already mentioned, are sequence, iteration and branching. So sequence is the order of which the instructions are executed in. It's really important that you sort of work through the code in the order so to make sure you know the way it's working. Iteration, um, we can do, we can repeat things for a certain amount of times um, until something happens or we can repeat for a fixed number. And then branching, a program will run a different set of instructions based on the input it receives. Okay, so this is the order of which I think people should sort of learn programming. Starting with a simple hello world, which is simple output, some basic maths, some input, then selection, iterations and so on. I'm not going to go through all this right now, but I will in due course in future lessons. Okay, so let's start off with where we should always start, which is hello world, our first C Sharp program. Now, I'm going to be using Visual Studio. You can use Visual Studio Code. There's a whole bunch of other IDEs out there you can use. There's even online C Sharp um, compilers. So for example, I've gone to Google, typed in C Sharp online compiler. I can bring up the first one um, and straight away I have got hello world. And I can run this and it will output the results here. But um, if you want to create bigger and better programs, this will become restrictive. But it's a nice place to practice. But I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to, I've just already selected uh, languages C Sharp to make it a little bit easy for me to choose from. I'm going to choose console application. So this is going to look like a terminal window. Um, so press next. I'm just going to give it a sensible world, so sensible name, so hello lesson one. I'm going to choose a sensible folder. So I've already got one called programming stuff. And of course I've called it lesson one. I can just press next and it's going to build this project for us. So you can see it's very similar to the to the web to the web one that we just saw. Get rid of that. So we can see it's almost the same sort of code. Um, so I've got uh, a library file that it's including. It's got the name of the actual project, class program. Again, we're not going to worry too much about what these are. Just don't delete them. All of this grammar is is important. So there we go. I've got console.write line hello world. So I'm just going to call this um, hello lesson one. Oops, spelled that wrong. And I'm just going to run this program. So I can press this button up here, uh, which is the same as me pressing debug, start debugging, or I can press F5, but I like to press the play button. And it's going to launch this program. So it's, it's building it down there, so it's compiling it. And there we go, hello lesson one, with just some junk code after it. So there's our first lesson, hello world. Feel free to write a few more commands in there with our console dot write line. So again, Visual Studio is, is completing this for us. Open bracket. And I can put um, any, you know, any message in here that I wish. And all C sharp lines end with a semicolon, so that tells us that it's the end of this command. So the semicolon just means finished. So unlike Python, we don't need to tab in, we don't need to indent um, any of this space before it is simply to make it easier for us to read. Okay, so if I just press play again, it should take a moment to compile. There we go. Hello, lesson one. Hello, C sharp. 
Okay, so we're going to do something a little more, a little more interesting now. Think of a simple problem: area of a rectangle. You know, we've got the width is five centimeters, length is five centimeters. I'm sure many of you know immediately. Um, let's go through that bit. The answer is oh, it's gone wrong way around. Um, is five times five is equal to twenty-five? Area of a rectangle eight um, forty-seven. All we're doing is multiplying the width by the length. So this becomes our program. You know, this is our algorithm. The answer is equal to the width times the length. We don't have to worry too much about the number itself. So, I don't want that just yet. So, if we want to code this, I could uh, just get rid of these for the moment. In fact, I'll get rid of the first by the second line. I can just put um, enter two numbers. This is giving the user something to go with. Um, I'm, sure I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to copy and paste that. Actually, I'll just change this a little bit to enter first number. And now I need a number to, in, to in input, so I'm going to create int, because I want a whole number, integer num1 equals console. Oh, my spelling today is not good. Insert console.read line. Now it's going to whinge at this, unfortunately. This is why some people don't like to go to C sharp straight away. This is going to read a string. It's expecting text, and this is a number. That's no problem, we can just go int dot parse. And what this is going to do is convert it. Now, for now, we will make sure what we are typing in is accurate. Uh, if we type a letter in, it will just cause it to crash. So I'm now going to say import second number. And again, I'm going to have another integer. So this is me declaring a variable called num1 and a variable called num2. And I'm going to assign whatever I type in. And I can just put now int answer is equal to num1 times num2. Now obviously we should make it more uh, more readable really by actually saying this width and height but I'm just going to keep it as num1 for num num uh, as numbers net for now. And now I can just output this a so console dot right line open bracket and I'm just going to put answer. Again this will only work with whole numbers. So if I run this program now Enter first number, so we'll just test it. Five, second one, five. There we go, there's our answer, 25. Obviously, I should put something more meaningful. And we'll just test the other one. So if we go back a slide, what was it? Eight times 47. Let's go and check it out. So if I run this, so if I put eight and 47, um, 376. Now, if, if I wanted to, I, sh I could test this and make sure I've not done anything silly with my program by going eight times 47, and they should be the same answer. Because what if I'd code something a bit weird and it had not worked? Okay, so that's just doing some just very simple maths. Again, it's a really good place to start programming by just doing some simple calculations. Okay, so now let's have a look at a more common problem. It's, let's say you're programming a game and you want to know whether these two cars have hit each other or not yet, how close they are in proximity. Well, we're going to assume this is the, the coordinates of the car, this middle section. Um, and we need to sort of break this down single steps, simple steps. So, what we're actually going to use is Pythagoras theorem. You know, we can assume that one of the cars is sort of a, is on the A part, one's on the B, and the hypotenuse between them. If that, if the hypotenuse is a short enough distance, they must be touching each other. Uh, it's a really common problem, distance between two objects, which is why you get taught it at school. And again, the formula is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, so to keep it Straightforward. Now we're not going to worry about the actual game because that would be more complex. But this is what the theorem would look like as an algorithm. You know, at school you're taught a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then you just kind of do it. But in a program, the algorithm needs to break that down. So we're going to input a. We're then going to input b. Then we're going to say c is equal to the square root of a times a plus b times b because we don't have a square function on our keyboard. And then we're going to finally output it. So let's go back into Visual Studio. Um, I'm just going to say, I'm going to pinch these numbers now, uh, input A, then we're going to say input B. Now we've got a problem because these are integers, these are whole numbers. Our answer is probably not going to be a whole number. So just to change that right now, I'm going to change it to a double. Um, a double, it gives us a basically a number with a decimal point. And obviously I can get rid of this answer now. So I could all write this on, on one go, um, which is going to be our, just like I did before, I can say a 
oops, A times it. Right, I'm still calling it number one answer, which is why it's not allowing it. So I will change this now to A, change this to B. So I'm just going to go A times A plus B times B. And that gives us our, our, our first part, but now it's to the square root. So I'm going to come to the beginning of this line. Now, I could sort of, in some languages, write square root, but that doesn't exist. I need to enter the maths library and go math dot square root. So there we go, it's coming up. So the reason I changed to a double, if you notice, it's saying this this is a double. So rather than a whole number, it's going to give me that decimal, that decimal place number instead. So I can just use square root. And because this is a function, I'm just going to wrap a bracket around it and another one at the end. So now this is going to do a times a, so a squared plus b squared. It's then going to find the square root and then assign it back to the answer where it will finally output it. So again, if let's have a little uh, run of this. So if I just type in 5 again, and 5 again, and there's our answer, 7.07. .07. Now I've done this before, so I know that's approximately correct. Well, that's actually very correct. So that's how we can find our, our response. And of course, if we were in a game, we could say, if this number is less than 1, then the cars have collided. OK, so I think that brings the end of, of, our, of our speed run of lesson one. What I'd like you to maybe go and do is, is have a go at some of these programming challenges. The best way to learn to program is to practice things. Take what you've learned from this lesson and try these. So a temperature converter, Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit back to Celsius. This is great when us in the UK are talking to people in the US and we're, we're constantly working in different temperatures. And we're trying to brag of who's got the coldest or who's got the hottest. And then try to do some shapes. Input the width and height of the rectangle. Well, we've just done that. But this time, output the perimeter and the area of, this, of the rectangle. Um, input the width, height and depth of a cuboid. Then output the surface area and the volume of that cube. Then finally, you know, input the radius of a circle, but output the diameter, circumference. And then assume we're also going to want the volume if that radius belonged to a sphere. You know, these are all fairly simple problems, but could be a nice bit of practice. Okay, so go away, have a go at that, and I shall see you in lesson two.